Hello everybody, welcome to TeamSoft Tutorials. Today we are going to take a look at SAP Business One in terms of its key features and navigation. By way of introduction, let us first run through the purchasing and sales processes. Over here on the left hand side, we have a number of modules that represent the different features of SAP Business One. Under the purchasing module, we have a number of options. Here, within the purchase order screen, we can choose which supplier we would like to buy from. In this case, I'm going to buy from Lumarks. Here, we can see that there can be a purchase order of type item or of type service. For a purchase order of type item, we will be picking items from our item list and a service order might be something like your electricity bill or your gas bill. So we click into the item number area and press tab and this will load our list of items. Now I happen to know that the network card has a code C000 and if we look along here we can see it is this one. And we're going to order 10 of them and add them to our order. Down here in green you can see the operation completed successfully. Having added the purchase order, the purchase order screen goes to the blank screen waiting for you to add a new one. We can tell we're in add mode because there is an add button down here on the bottom and because our fields are all in white. To change to find mode, we can go up here and press on this particular icon. All of the icons across this area that are available for use while we have this purchase order window open are in color and those that are grayed out are not available for this particular feature. In this instance we want to go to the last purchase order we created so we can do this by choosing one of these green arrows and choosing the last data record. The next step in our purchasing process will be to receive these goods into stock. So to do this with our purchase order open we can go down here to the copy to button and click on this and choose the goods receipt PO. When we click on this it creates a new window called goods receipts PO with all of the information immediately populated into it. At this point we can simply add it to say that we have received these items. Should we wish to make a change to this goods receipt, let's say only eight of the items rece were received in, then we can change the quantity here to eight and receive that item. We can press add you cannot change this document after you've added it. Continue? Yes. In the next stage of our process, we can go back to our last record and we can copy to our accounts payable invoice. Instead, to show you a different way of doing this, we can cancel out of these windows and under our purchasing tab here in our main menu, we can choose our AP invoice directly. This time we want to generate our AP invoice for our vendor Lumarks and we can copy from our goods receipts PO. And here is the one that we created just now. We can choose to customize it should we wish and next and we, we want to copy that over and send it to invoice and finish and add. Oh, posting date. By typing the letter T and tab that will fill in today's date so we can add. So let's add it. And down here on the bottom we can see the operation completed successfully. Let's close these windows now and return over here to our main menu and go to our sales module. Let's start by creating a quotation. The quotation we're going to create will be for one of our customers. So if we hit tab we get to see the list of business partners. In this case we want to sell to MaxiTech second account. You're starting to notice that all of these document areas look very alike. They all tend to have the customer information and name up on the top, the posting date and due date information over here, and the center area seems similar for each of them. They also mostly have copy to or copy from features down at the bottom. And while this is our sales quotation, it's very similar to what would have happened on the purchase side. Again, in the sales quotation, we have a choice of a sales quotation of the type item or service. And again, you may be wishing to make a quotation for some service that you're offering that doesn't actually have an item code against it. In that case, you would have to have a service invoice. In this case, we're going to make a quotation for MaxiTech for an office printer, a monitor, and a network card. Again, while we're in either the item number or the item description field, we can press tab, and this will still give us 
the list of items that we're interested in. So we are interested in quoting this customer for two office printers. We would also like to quote them for a monitor. This is the monitor that we ordered earlier on in our purchase invoice. And we would like to add uh, two network cards to this particular quotation. So we're quoting for two office printers and two network cards, and we can add. And because I'm working in a test environment, Outlook Express is not attached to it, so it's just giving me that error message to say that it's unable to find the Outlook Express. As with the purchase process, we can go up here and see our last data record, and we can simply copy that quotation through to an order. So our customer has agreed with this quotation and wishes to proceed with the order. And again, the order has auto-filled with all of the information. We don't really need to do anything, possibly fill in today's date for the delivery date. It wants to know, do we want to update this? We do, and then we choose to add it. And the operation completed successfully again. So now we go to our previous order again, the last data record, and we can copy this directly through to a delivery doc at this time. Now with any of these documents, we can click here on this grey area to see the entire screen. We can double click it again to reduce it back to its original size. And in here, in this particular area, you can click this arrow to view them all like this and click it again, this little blue arrow, to take it back down. We can go up here to view and fit column width to make these fit in a more readable fashion. So let's add our delivery docket. And again, the same as with our purchase process. So operation completed successfully. Again, we can go to our last delivery docket and send it to invoice. And at any time, if you're starting at the invoice instead of at the base document, we can do that too. So remember, we had C2000A, MaxiTech is our a customer. And go in here to our AR invoice. In here, we're going to key in our customer. And this time, because we're starting at the invoice, we want to copy from the base document. That was a delivery document. And here we can see that delivery document that we just created, and we can choose it. And again, we can draw all the data, or we can customize the data we want to pull in. And everything has been pulled straight through to our sales invoice. And again, we can add. So, so far, we've looked at how a lot of these fields are very alike in each of our processes. We have looked at how these menu items across the top become available depending on what document you're in. We have seen all the different modules that are available in Business One that represent the different business functions are available here on the left hand side. And we've also seen that you can add a new document or you can find by being in this window and pressing on the find feature you can find an existing document. If we want to find document number 100, we type it in here and enter, and we can see that AR invoice 100 was to this company called SG Electronics, and it was for these particular items. And we can say OK. We also said that in any of these fields, let's go to the last document, you can see information about your customer, in this case, by hovering over the golden arrow or by clicking into it to actually open that business partner master data area. Another interesting feature on SAP Business One, should you find yourself interested in figuring out where it was you saw that sales quotation area, by clicking somewhere here on your dashboard, from your search menu, you can choose to search data or to search menus. In this case, we're going to search menus because we can't remember where in here our menus were. And we're going to start looking for our sales quotation. By typing it in, you can see we get a selection of options here. And here you can see that we have two different options for sales quotation. And the reason for that is if we hover over them, we can see that sales quotation is accessible through main menu, CRM and sales quotation, or through main menu, sales AR, and sales quotation. And if we look over here on the main menu, sales AR, we have sales quotation. And the other area it said was main menu, CRM, 
and sales quotation. So that can be a convenient little feature when we're trying to find our way around business one initially in particular. So let's go back and take a look at that sales quotation we just created. Even though this link is in different modules within the main menu, it's still reaching the same area, the same sales quotation area. So let's go back to the last one again. And while we are here, let's take a look up here at the print preview. And this is a default preview of how this particular document might look if you were to print it. And these can be edited to suit your requirements. Other handy features within Business One is the ability to send something to Microsoft Excel or to Word or to a PDF. And furthermore, in this area, here we can see a certain number of columns, but you can edit this to view more or less as you wish. So we may not wish to see this type column, for example. We can go in here into this form settings button up here. When this pops up, we go to the table format and we just remove the check mark from the visible column for that type. And let's say we often sell items that have serial numbers on them. We can choose the serial number column and ask it to appear. So when we close this, this particular field a screen will have updated with the type to have disappeared and the serial number will appear. So, OK. And the UI change is saved successfully, it tells us down here. And the type has vanished and the serial number column has appeared. Should you find that some of these modules over here on the left aren't available in your version of SAP Business One, this could be for a number of reasons. Each user in SAP Business One is assigned a different license. The license, if it's a full professional type, has access all areas. And if it's a limited type, has access for the areas related to that type of license. Limited licenses are available in the flavours of CRM, Sales and Finance. Another reason why you may not have access to all of these modules that you can see here might be that your administrator hasn't set you up for those particular features. Within each of these modules within SAP Business One, usually towards the end of the options that are there, you will see a sales reports. In this case, we're in the sales module. And within these reporting modules, you have a various list of options. Here, we can take a look at the open items list. And this will show us for sales orders that these items are still open and haven't been dealt with yet. You can change that drop down menu for sales quotations. So you can take a look at what quotations are still outstanding that weren't pulled forward into sales orders and decide what you want to do with them. Other reports include sales analysis. Here you can set various parameters, time frame that you want to look at, the annual report, a monthly report, quarterly report and so on. And when you have happy with your selection, you can press OK. And here we can see information about each of our customers and the various invoice amounts that are there and the gross profit that was available for those. In each of these modules, there are various reporting features. Under opportunities, we have our opportunities reports and our opportunities pipeline, for example. Here in this area, we have a number of different stages that each have a certain level of activity. This is our prospecting stage. There's an expected income from this stage of 70 odd thousand. And over here in our one stage, we have an expectation of having won 20,000 of this one. Again, in terms of business partners, in SAP Business One, our business partners represent everybody, whether they're our customers or our suppliers or the people that we would like to make customers, who we call leads. So in our business partner master data area, we are, and again, similar with other documents, we're in the find mode because the find button is here and because these fields are yellow. We can find a particular partner. The name might be MaxiTech. And by starting typing it and hitting enter, all of the names, the BP names that begin with MAX have shown up. So we can take a look at that particular customer. Thank you very much for joining us for this tutorial. I hope it was of help to you. If we can help you with anything in relation to SAP Business One, you will find our information at teamsoft.ie. Thank you again. Bye bye.